Um, from the book of Revelation, chapter 21. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Behold, the dwelling of God is with men. He will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself will be with them. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes, and death shall be no more. Neither shall there be mourning, nor crying, nor pain anymore, for the former things have passed.
I actually uh, heard this uh, little story uh, from uh, the owner of this funeral home. I forget what his name is. But I thought it was so beautiful that I thought that I would uh, copy it, look, look on the internet, copy it, and bring it to you. It's called The Train of Life. It says, be thankful for the journey. Life is like a train ride. We get on, we ride, we get off. There are accidents and delays at certain stops. There are surprises. Some of these will translate into great moments of joy, some into moments of great sorrow. When we are born, we first board the train. We meet people who think, who we think will be with us for the entire journey. Those people are, are our parents. Sadly, this is far from the truth. Our parents will be with us for as long as we need them, for they too have journeys they must complete. We will live on with the memories of their love, affection, friendship, guidance, and their ever presence. There will be others who will board the train and who will become very important to us. In turn, these people are our brothers, our sisters, our friends, our acquaintances, whom we will learn to love and cherish. Some people will consider their journey like a tour. They're just in for the ride. Others will encounter many upsets, many tears, many losses on their journey. Others still will, will linger on to offer a helping hand to anyone in need. Some people on this train will leave an everlasting impression when, when they get off. Some will get on and get off the train so quickly, they will scarcely leave a sign that they ever travel along with you or ever cross your path. We will sometimes be upset that some passengers who we love will choose to sit somewhere else and leave us to travel on our own. That's all right. Everyone's journey will be filled with hopes, with dreams, with challenges, setbacks and goodbyes. We must try to make the best of every circumstance on this train ride and look for the best in everyone else. We must remember that any moment during our journey that any one of us or our companions can leave this train. We must realize that we don't know when our last stop will come. Neither do we know when our travel companions sitting next to us will make their last stop. Not even those sitting in the seat next to us. Personally, I know I'll be sad to make my final stop. I know my separation from all those friends and acquaintances I made during the train ride will be painful. Leaving all those that I'm close, close to will be very painful. But I'm certain that one day I will get to the main station only to meet up with everyone else. We are all on this train ride together. Above all, we should all try to make this ride as pleasant and memorable as we can. Right up until at least one of us makes that final stop and leave the train for the final time. I heard this. Uh, when they gave my dad's obituary, obituary and I thought it was so beautiful that I thought I'd copy it and bring it in uh, for my dad's graduation. And I call it a graduation because I know that when we die, we have a better life. I thank the Lord for my dad. I thank that. Uh, I thank the Lord that that he was such a good father. The last time I seen him. It was three months ago when I buried one of my favorite uncles. And I have many. My dear Arsenio. And I remember when I left the house that I said, we, we said a prayer all the time. 
But this time was special. I felt like, like I would never see my dad again in my life, in this life. So we prayed. I said, Dad, I don't know if we're going to meet each other again. Because I knew that he wasn't feeling all that great. He had to me some money. I didn't want to take it. But he said, Jimmy, take it. Because I don't need it anymore. We're all going to come to that point in our lives when the best thing, the only thing that we're going to need is a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. And I thank the Lord for that last opportunity that I had to speak with my dad. I spoke to him quite a few times after that on the phone, and every time I would say that, just trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. And he would say, Jimmy, I do. So I thank the Lord for this opportunity. I thank the Lord for all his friends. I thank the Lord for his uh, siblings. I tell Nelly who's here from Albuquerque. Uh, and and uh, my tia, Priscilla, who couldn't be here today. Uh, my cousins from Utah who couldn't make it. I talked to my, my cousin James, who was very close, and he said, Jimmy, you know what? It's very hard for us right now uh, because of all the snow up here, the, the, the agreements that I have for New Year's. But I know your dad, he said. Your dad will be the first one to tell me you don't take a chance in the snow. I thank the Lord for this privilege. Amen. Yes, sir. <laughs> If anybody has anything that they would like to share about my dad, you're welcome to do that. We'll give you about a minute, okay? So if anybody wants to um, come up, you can, you can come up. I will because the honor has been vested to me as the oldest uh, of the, um, the uh, son-in-laws. 48 years worth been a good train ride, Jimmy. <laughs> <clears throat> but it's not my show here, it's his show, and he would like for you to come up really if you would. Anybody we want to have that we're going to limit you, remember, the boss is there. Hold the mic to your, close to your mouth so that people can hear, but we really do want to invite people to come and say the word. Nikki, you can come. Okay. With his such a wise mind, even at the age of 93, he was so clear in what his life was about, what he did. I mean, I, I couldn't believe the strength. My mother is 93 as well, and he's like two months older than her, but my mom's mind is, is very clear as well, but um, doesn't remember like things like my tio would remember. He would remember details that um, I can't remember in my own life. And, uh, and so he was a great man. But as I looked at my deal the other day, uh, it was a picture that my mom had in the kitchen. And I looked at that picture, it was my tío Félix and his wife, my tía Epifania, my tía Sipia, my tío Nestor, 
my mom and my dad, and there was one other couple there. And they've all faded away, except for my mom. And um, this family, this family from the Romero Dominguez family, and all the other families, because they do come from a large family as well, that my, my grandpa Vitor had. Uh, we've touched Pacheco, Tio, Sandovales, Dominguez, a lot. It's a large family. You know, it reminds me of just that, that pebble that you dropped. I um, Let's lighten things up a little bit here. <laughs> and I don't want to steal any thunder if this, this was in the eulogy or not, but... I like beer when it's near. <laughs> that was my grandpa. I like wine. When it's not mine. <laughs> I like tequila when I go to Manila. So I don't know if he ever went to Manila or not. So I don't think he ever had any uh, tequila. But, um, you know, I toast to you, Grandpa. I know uh, you're dancing with Grandpa. And I know that, uh, you know, just like you in that clown suit up there. <laughs> making us all laugh, so uh, that's one jitterbug with grandma up there and uh, we love you.
Yeah. Amen. Amen. Ah, my father in law. You guys see the videos? You know, I, I, I know it's a sad moment, but we can't stop laughing sometimes because I remember the, the times we spent with him and he would make us laugh, some of the things that he would say. Um, a lot of times I, I uh, my, well my kids know that I'm always trying to make them laugh. And I see myself my, in my spectrum. And my goal all the time is to make my wife laugh. Because I tell her that she's real dry. <laughs> and she, and she doesn't have a sense of humor, and you know, she's a lot like my suegra. My suegra was real quiet, right? And my suegra would try to make her laugh, and my suegra would just say, "Ay, viejo." <laughs> and I, a lot of times, I hear my wife says, "Ay, babe." <laughs> my goal is to make her laugh, you know, that she's my better half, and. Uh, so my suegro, he, to me, he was, he was like a dad, and uh, I, I, uh, I cherish every moment. I'm gonna read this, uh, this like uh, a poem. It's in Spanish, so my kids probably won't understand it. <laughs> <laughs> but I hope you enjoy. It says, "Cuando sea viejo, el día que esté viejo y ya no sea el mismo." Ten paciencia y compréndeme. Cuando derrame comida sobre mi camisa y olvide cómo atarme mis zapatos, recuerda que las horas que pasé enseñándote a hacer las mismas cosas. Si cuando conversas conmigo, repito y repito las mismas palabras, ¿qué sabes de sobra, de sobra cómo termina? No me interrumpas y escúchame, cuando eras pequeño, para que te durmieras, tuve que contarte miles de veces el mismo cuento, hasta que cerrabas los ojitos. Cuando, estabas, cuando estamos reunidos y sin querer haga mis necesidades, no te avergüences y compréndeme, que no tengo la culpa de ello, pues ya no puedo controlarlas. Piensa cuántas veces cuando niño te ayudé y estuve paciente a tu lado esperando a que terminaras lo que estabas haciendo. No me reproches porque no quiera bañarme. No me regañes por ello. Recuerda los momentos que te perseguí a los mil pretextos que te inventaba para hacerte más agradable tu aseo. Acéptame perdóname, ya que soy el niño ahora. Cuando me veías inútil e ignorante frente a todas las cosas tecnológicas que ya no pod podré entender, te suplico que me des todo el tiempo que, que sea necesario para no lastimarme con tu sonrisa burlona. Acuérdate que yo fui quien te enseñé tantas cosas, comer, vestirte y tu educación para enfrentar la vida también como lo haces. Son producto de mi esfuerzo y perseverancia por ti. Cuando en algún momento, mientras hablamos, me, me llega a olvidar de qué estamos hablando, dame todo el tiempo que sea necesario hasta que yo recuerde. Y si no puedo hacerlo, no te burles de mí. Tal vez no era importante lo que hablaba y me conformé con que me escuches en ese momento. Si alguna vez ya no quiero comer, no me insistas. Sé cómo puedo y cuánto no debo. También comprendo que con el tiempo ya no tengo dientes para morder mi gusto, para sentir cuando me fallen mis piernas por estar cansadas para, para andar, 
dame tu mano tierna para apoyarme, como lo hice yo cuando comenzaste a caminar con tus débiles piernas. Siempre quise lo mejor para ti y he preparado los caminos que has debido recorrer. Piensa entonces que con el paso que me adelanto, adelanto a dar estaré construyendo para ti en otra ruta, en otro tiempo, para siempre contigo. No te sientas triste o impotente por verme como me ves. Dame tu corazón, compréndeme y apóyame como lo hice cuando empezaste a vivir. De la misma manera, como te he acompañado en tu sendero, te ruego que me acompañes a terminar el mío. Dame amor, paciencia, que te devolveré gratitud y sonrisas con el inmenso amor que tengo por ti. Cuando sea viejo. Nos reunimos ahora para celebrar la vida de Néstor Domínguez. Febrero 26, 1996, 26, diciembre 25, 2019. I'd like to welcome everybody here. My name is Luis Morales. It's a great privilege and honor for me to be here this morning to speak at the funeral of my father-in-law, Nestor Dominguez. He, he was a, a great man and a hard worker, loved his family. He was a clown. <laughs> <laughs> which I really admired because I didn't have to be a different person. I could be myself to try to make him laugh too. And as I was sitting there, I was thinking the first time that he saw me, and I, and I smiled because I, I thought that, that black wig that he's wearing there, that's how he saw me. I had a big hat for this. I don't have hair anymore. But I had a big afro, tall, skinny. And I wondered, what if he said, what in the world did my, brother, my daughter bring home? <laughs> she found me a Texan, he wrote, look at him. You know? And Jimmy was telling me, but no te casas con un tejano. <laughs> she would even tell her. Anyway. <laughs> we always worry as fathers who, the, who are your daughters will end up with. And I always wanted to please my suegro. Because he gave the three son-in-laws a very good example of how to be dedicated, how to be a man, how to work, how to love his wife. And, and I, I never wanted to let him down. So, the job keeps working, keeps going. Um, I, um, I want to read in Ecclesiastics 3. It says, it's going to be in Spanish. Todo tiene su tiempo. And one of his cousins had died for Christmas. He said, I forgot his name, but he said, ah, pobre, whatever his name was, he says, la va a pasar el, el pobre Christmas in the, in the freezer. <laughs> <laughs> that was my father, you know, he just blurted up whatever was in his mind. <laughs> and we always said, yeah, yeah, grandpa. Well, as you all know, it's been really cold. <laughs> My poor father-in-law passed away Christmas morning. <laughs> you know, on that morning, my wife got some pajamas. And they had like stripes. And he had to say something. And he says, hey, who got the prisoner pants? <laughs> <laughs> you know, we laugh, but his sense of humor was there all the time. 
and you didn't have to nudge him. He just said, hey, who got the first pair of pants? <laughs> Your daughter, Esther, got them. <laughs> okay. So the Bible says there's a time to laugh, a time for everything, a time to mourn. I want you to know it's very important for you to mourn. You got to let it out. That's right, At your time. But you got to let it out, because if not, it builds in you. Trust in God to give you that strength to, to cope with it, to let it out. But focus on the good life that my father-in-law had, that your grandfather had, that your son, I mean your brother, your brother, he, he had a good life. I wish I could be half the man he was. Uh, when I got married to my wife, <laughs> I, we went for Lenya. And he says, I can outwork any man at any age. <laughs> <laughs> so I, here I was, trying to outdo him. <laughs> And uh, needless to say, I had never been for Lenya, so he outdid me. <laughs> and he was proud of it. And he says, "You need, you need to, you need to get better. You need to learn how to do this." Okay. <laughs> he, he, he was something else. You know, my, my kids. I, I tell it like it is a lot of times, and my kids tell me, "Why, you, why did you say that?" My answer to them is, did I lie? <laughs> I'm like, well, no, but you don't have to be so, so like, honest. <laughs> well, that was him. <laughs> anyway, I want to pray. I want you to know that there, the Bible says there's a time to mourn, a time to be born, and a time to die. It's just natural. Okay. Oh God, you are perfect in every way. You send your perfect son to this earth that we might be forgiven. That you might have life eternal with it. That we might have life eternal with you. When we believe in your son. And you gave us the gift of your earthly son, Nestor, who showed us how to love and to be loved, and who showed us how to suffer with such grace. As we grieve, but not as those who have no hope, we realize that Nestor has gone on before us, and it is our hope to one day see our dad and friend. And we receive your comfort and your peace, not as the world gives, but your peace. And we receive your strength for the days ahead without Nestor. And we know that when we are empty, you will fill us. And when we are downcast, you will lift us up and bear us up as eagles' wings. I pray, O oh, our Father, for family for, to, to as close as we are, that you give us strength, God, that you continue, Lord, to just guide us and give us peace in our family. In Jesus' name. Amen. The Word of God is a beautiful thing. And us as believers, see what we see here is just a shell. You know, people are here with us, and as sad as it'll be to say goodbye, uh, it's really not goodbye until we see you again. And so I thank God that he has allowed me to be a Dominguez for, I'm not going to tell how many years, but <laughs> um, I just thank God that, um, you know, um, my dad was the hardest working that I know. He was, he loved my mom unconditionally until the very end. He was a great husband of 67 years, and he left a great example, and he leaves a great example to all of us children and grandchildren and great grandchildren, friends and family. So I thank God for him today. So um, now we're going to ask my daughter, our oldest Faith, to come up and she's going to say,
the eulogy a few words about her grandpa. Nestor Dominguez's life began in through just New Mexico on February 26, 1926. His parents were Donicio and Bonifacio Dominguez. He was one of nine children. His, child con his childhood contained countless stories of how he helped his dad farm the land and how his family, along with their neighbors, would barter different resources from each other. He attended through just elementary with four boys and four girls. However, he had to drop out after the eighth grade because the nearest high school was too far in Española and they didn't have a car. Growing up in Duchas, Grandpa would say that their family didn't have a lot of money, but that it didn't stop them from having fun. He remembered making their own baseball bats, playing marbles, cowboys and Indians, and at holidays such as Christmas, he and his siblings would go from house to house yelling, Miss Christmas! And they were given apples, oranges, peanuts, and the very rare piece of candy. Mm -hmm. Two days before he passed, he shared a memory with us that since they couldn't afford candy, they created their own by crystallizing sugar in a pan, letting it cool, and breaking it apart. This simple way of living made him the most humble person I know. After leaving the eighth grade at 15 years old, he had his first job at, a year later at Tezuke as a janitor, which is now called Bishop's Lodge. This is where he first ate, laid eyes on my grandma, Silvia Romero, but we'll talk more about that a little bit later. He worked there for a good while, until the age of 17 when he moved to Oakland, California. His job there was a ship feeder for 95 cents an hour, building ships for World War II. He worked there for two and a half years, until the war ended and was laid off. He then decided to move back to New Mexico and got a job in Los Alamos, Los Alamos as a mess hall attendant, and there he ran into Silvia Romero once again. It was there that he decided to ask her on a date. Grandpa told me once that there were quite a few women that liked him, but he only wanted to go out with Silvia because she was the prettiest one. <laughs> And even though he wanted to date her, he had to ask permission from her dorm matron, Lola. She must have trusted Nestor because she allowed them to date. Their first date was to the movies, which cost him a whopping 50 cents. <laughs> this included the movie tickets, popcorn, and two Cokes. <coughs> However, he didn't have a car or a license, so he had to ask someone to drive them. <laughs> They continued to date for about eight months until he popped the question, and from the time my grandma said yes to the wedding was two weeks and cost a total of $150. <laughs> 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 
life for Nestor and CPL and we get started right away. They lived in through jobs for a little bit before starting his career as a miner. He mined lead and zinc in Colorado and Utah for a total of nine years. And in 1955, he moved the family to Arizona and there he mined copper. He worked in the San Ramon mines until he retired in 1986 and was the sole provider for the home they created for, their, for his wife and seven beautiful children. All of them kids remember their dad as a hard worker with a strong work, work ethic. He was very frugal and always made sure to put money aside for savings, which in turn made him very generous. Nestor wasn't much of a hugger, but all of his children knew in their hearts how, how good they were. Jimmy recalls him doubling his earnings on payday from selling newspapers. <coughs> Gloria remembers that he compl never complained, but instead continuously appreciated everything and everyone got older, and now he was my best friend. Bernice expressed her daddy as being thoughtful. He would find out that she would that what she wanted, the latest and greatest toy, such as a Thambolina doll or a cotton candy machine, and he would secretly get it for her and surprise her. Mm -hmm. Esther, being the youngest, remembers how faithful she was. She remembers him hiding in trees at night and jumping off to scare her and her friends. <laughs> <laughs> One time I asked my grandpa what the kids were like when they were younger. I really wanted to know who gave him the most headaches. <laughs> he shared a few stories about each of the kids. Don't worry, I'll save those for later. <laughs> but he did say that some were good, others were quiet, and then some took turns being wild. But, in the, but at that, in the end, they all turned out good. He said that he was very proud of all his children, grandchildren, and great grandchildren. And if you ever stepped into his house, you know how true that is. Every photo that was sent he proudly displayed on the fridge, shelf, dresser, cabinet, or blank wall space. He never put any away. He just simply added it anywhere he could. Grandpa always gave advice to anyone who was willing to listen and hope for the best. But even if you messed up, he still loved you unconditionally. And as everybody has been saying, the best example of love that he gave us was how he showed us when he loved my grandma throughout their entire life together and even after she passed. Although he would often tease her and call her vieja, he, didn't, he did everything he could to take care of her up until her final days. He would often go and visit her at the gravesite, and when conversations would come up about her, he would still get emotional and wipe a tear or two from his eyes. If my grandpa were still alive, this is about the time that he would crack a joke. <laughs> he was always trying to lighten up a strenuous situation. He loved making people laugh, as you can tell from the videos. Leandra remembers asking her, how do you share the news? <coughs> Telegraph, telephone, tell a woman. No matter how many times he would tell the same joke, he always laughed at the end. <laughs> it never got old, and to be honest, all of us didn't mind either. We all know the infamous jokes, and Lee shared some a little bit earlier. I like brandy when it's handy, Coors when I'm at Miss Moore's, wine when it's not mine, and my personal favorite, whiskey when I'm feeling frisky. <laughs> Another thing my grandpa loved was dogs. I don't think I ever remember him without one. We probably couldn't even count them all, but one thing is for sure, they all had the same names. <laughs> we joked with the emergency responders, telling them that his current dog, Chiquita, who laid by his side, was Chiquita number 12. <laughs> but he also had about five blackies, a couple of whiteies, but only one cinnamon. You could often see him sitting on the porch with one of his dogs by his side or on his lap, enjoying the breeze or a conversation with anyone who was present. My grandpa enjoyed doing lots of things other than just sitting on the porch. He was a man of simple pleasures. He enjoyed hiking the mountain in the back for rocks and stones, treasure hunting for fool's gold, visiting family or friends regularly, creating little things out of wood in his workshop, 
eating practically anything sweet, calling it the best in the West by any test, <laughs> and giving his grandkids their first sips of beer, telling us, shh, don't tell your mom and dad. <laughs> it's hard, mom and dad. <laughs> I have so many memories in which I could share, but my absolute favorites are when it would usually just be me and him. For the past few years, Every time I would come, I would sit down and interview him. He was my walking history book. I would ask him everything from the Great Depression to the Civil Rights Movement and everything in between. And he would answer every single long, drawn-out question and patiently wait until I wrote his responses down. His memory was beyond pristine. He remembered everything in vivid detail. I don't think I'll ever meet anyone with such a great memory as him. He would give me specific dates of every single family member's birthday, and in some cases, death. He remembered not just the month and the day, but also the year of every single family member, his brothers, his sisters, his sister-in-laws, his brother-in-laws, every single one. He gave me the birthday and the death in every single case. We even showed him the 1930 census, and this did names for him. And he would say, oh yeah, that was my neighbor. <laughs> Or we used to trade fruits and vegetables with them. There was even an instance where he wrote down a list of about 75 men who went to a fight in World War II from Truchas. His best friend, Samuel Rodriguez, was one of the lives lost. Another memory I will forever cherish is a recent one. Grandpa loved going to the casino, especially on his birthday. Actually, the day before he passed, he went to a doctor's appointment. And on the way, he looked at the casino and said, that was my favorite building. <laughs> well, I had, asked, I had been asking Grandpa for quite a while if we could go together. But Grandpa never felt like it until this past summer. He finally told me yes. So we got dressed. We drove to the casino. And I walked arm in arm in the door, and we played side by side. Yeah. He wasn't very lucky that day, but I hit the jackpot being able to sit, being able to get my wish after so many years. These are the memories I will forever cherish in my heart for years to come. I could go on and on because of all the pages I have, but I'll end with the same traits I started with. <clears throat> Loyal, loving, wise, a family man with a big heart, mischievous sense of humor, respectful, humble, independent, genuine, sincere, fair, and a hard worker. These are all qualities in which my grandpa lived by and instilled in his seven children that have now been passed down to the government <coughs> and will continue to get passed down through generations to come. The legacy in which my grandparents left will live on through us when we say a joke, feed a dog, give advice, and just love each other unconditionally. I wish I could give my grandpa a hug right now, but if I did, it was always the same. A hug with a couple slaps on the back. <laughs> and, and sometimes with tears in his eyes, he'd say, Okay, you take care, you hear me? See you later. Well, Grandpa, now it's our turn to tell you we love you. And you take care, you hear us? See you later. P.S. Give Grandma and Uncle Walter a hug for us and tell them we miss them.
And now we're going to continue and in closing. I'm going to ask my, first of all, I want to say thanks to my siblings, Jimmy, being the oldest, Gloria, Louie, uh, Larry, <coughs> and Bernice. We were privileged to call him dad. And I thank you guys for who you are. I know we all took part in helping grandma and grandpa when we could. We all live in different states. But I want to thank you for being my brothers and my sisters, for being the family that we are, because of this great man right here. So I love you guys, and one day we'll see him again. Lupe? Yeah, there are memories. I carried her on my shoulders. Often, <laughs> where they lived to the river, I thought it was a river. We went on a picnic. <laughs> I just had just been married 48 years ago, and she was a little kid. Look at her now. That is <laughs> 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 the final. Uh, I guess my destiny with this family living here with my father-in-law, my mother-in-law is that I get to load up my pickup with chairs, tables, whatever, and then I get to clean up at the end. <laughs> but the chief engineer behind all this, there's always had to be somebody with a program, and she's sitting right here. Yeah. <coughs> and that's Gloria. So, we had to start off early, get prepared to get nervous as all, oh, you know. <laughs> Trips me, get steps in my, on my way, whatever, because she just wants to go here, go there at some time. But she puts the greatest pozole together, the beans, the chigadas, and whatever, the party's on. Everything comes together. It's like amazing. <laughs> and I get to wash a lot of dishes. <laughs> All you macho guys always wash the dishes. <laughs> so now the privilege is mine to close this today. And I can't help it but to make it. Uh, I'm not pointing it, but it's either my father in law or it could be my uh, deceased uh, brother in law also. Another euphemism. I call oh, let's call it an historism. <laughs> Never mind the weather. Here we are all together. <laughs> so today, tomorrow. Never mind the weather. Uh, we're all together. So I guess I'm not living all this because through washing dishes, stoking the fire. Uh, putting things in order because the engineer was always behind me. <laughs> uh, I didn't get a chance to script anything, so I want my ad lib quite a bit. I did write a few notes if I'm rambling back and forth. She won't say anything because she just won't step up to the mic, so she puts it. But that's my best. So, uh, First, it's been an honor to be with his family, brother in law, sister in law, Jimmy, my wife Gloria. My father used to say, my father and used to say, seven years worth the wrong woman, never did more than a man to tell you. Another in this story. So. So, but he lasted 67 years. I'm at 48. I got a, a more to do still. <laughs> so Jimmy, Gloria, my wife, Louie, the quiet one, Walter, deceased, Bernice, Joker Bernice, Larry, sensitive, serious guy, and Esther, the board leader. <laughs> I want to thank uh, all of you, first of all, for being here, those that traveled a long ways to get here. 
the family members, the kids, the grandkids. Thanks to everyone who is here in attendance, friends, family, and especially those who travel long distances. I want to thank the Vargas Funeral Home and their staff. All of those who brought food and did their prayers or accompanied us with their prayers, donations of any kind. Faith, the Afro, for their uh, ministry of the gospel. Uh, I want to thank my brother who has accompanied me and his family with their music, always, Reyes and Cordelia Garcia. My son Lee is accompanying me. And I had to twist his arm a little bit today, but Mr. Powerful David, <laughs> great guitarist, and he, he really wanted to, so thank you for chiming in. My daughter, my, my, niece, my granddaughter, Leah, she didn't want to stand up there, but she's got a great voice and she was pitching in. And my, and my uh, oldest uh, grandson, uh, Luke. I don't know if I'm forgetting anything. If I am, please raise your hand, Madison Jr. Because, like I said, I'm scrambling here. Uh, some of us think that I'm the big, tough guy. There's nobody that's tough enough for the Almighty. Even this tough guy. But he was ready. I know he was ready. I was visiting with him pretty often as my wife would be her caretaker when the other siblings went around and helping out with Walter and with Larry. And I did what I could from behind the scenes. So again, thanks to everybody. Uh, Cesar for the wonderful slideshow. Thank you. And those that helped him. Anybody who got involved. So I hope I haven't missed uh, much. So there's a couple of serious announcements that I'm supposed to not forget. And I wrote this one down already. Right so we're having a reception at the Arbolera in Chimayo. That's a community center. Chimayo Highway, Catholic Church on the left, Arbolera right afterwards. Uh, there's a playground in front of it. <clears throat> so we'll have a meal there. And not only do we want you there, we expect you there. If you have commitments, we understand. If you don't want to go, we also understand. But it would really be an honor for you to join us. So that will be immediately following when we leave here. Uh, the burial will be tomorrow in Truchas. High country. Yeah, he's going to the freezer. <laughs> I think that's a fortunate thing. You're good at that. For now. I'm only trying to keep up with you. So he'll be very uh, through just. The procession will start here for those that might want to join at 11 a.m. And by the time we get to through just, who knows, maybe 11.30. And we'll bury his remains in through just where he originated from. And so you're all welcome. That is tomorrow. So in ending, we want to end this as a celebration. And he's already been prayed for, eulogized. We have all these good feelings. But we're putting it kind of back down to earth. And so he, when we got together, we played music at my house or wherever we were. If there was any request from his, for his grandson, Lee, was a song. Uh, El Rancho Grande. 
and El Gavilán Pollero. So if you will excuse me, this bouncing hillbilly here that keeps going back and forth, I hope I haven't been too annoying, but I've got several duties. <laughs> so I will end here at the mic, at the, at the end of the songs, we're free to go, and we, you can join us at the Arboleda, but we'll, we'll play two songs in memory of Mr. Dominguez, Grandpa, and Grandfather, Grandpa. So, welcome Dios, and if I may just do one last thing for all those that will permit me, one last little prayer. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thank you very much.